All right, so uh, I went out shooting a couple of weeks ago, and now that I finally have the time, I get to work on my rifle. This thing always had the little problem of the forend being a little bit loose, but since I mean it, this is uh, on the verge there of being a large caliber, and large caliber rifles, I know that a lot of I mean, higher end companies they will leave just a little bit of play in the forend because if the wood shrinks or I mean it gets a little moist or is, the wood just is its natural state anymore. For example, I'll say if it dries and you shoot and it's very tight, it's shrunk around the barrel and around the barrel bands and whatever you have, it will crack. So they sometimes, usually, like I said, higher end companies usually will leave a very small space of movement in the, the forearm so that instead of the wood absorbing all the recoil, it has a tiny bit of play. So mine now has a lot of play and I'll show you guys how to tighten a dovetail really really cheaply at home so you'll need some screwdrivers you know whatever you have expensive screwdrivers aren't really needed for this because you'll need just to take out a couple screws in my case at least and for one method you'll need a hammer it, you could have just a ball peen i'll use a ball peen and a punch not a center punch and for another method you could have just a very small bit of tinfoil paper, the kind of stuff you use in the kitchen, or even just some uh, aluminum, aluminum foil tape. Sometimes it just might work a little bit better since it sticks on one side. But let's get started. First of all, we'll uh, dismantle this thing. Now that the rifle is slipped upside down and being held in place, uh, we could see the dovetail here, and here it is, very loose. You could just slide it out. One of the main issues with a loose, loose dovetail joint like this is that the tenon itself, which is the this moving piece right here, which is supposed to be immovable in the state, you're supposed to use this a punch to move this thing to align it properly. One of the issues that a, a loose dovetail like this causes is that the tendon is going to strip out. So pretty much two screws that I took out before come in into these holes right here and these holes strip out because it's going to be too much to one side so you'll strip out the threads on the tendon on one side the first few threads are going to be stripped out then on the other side you'll try to push in the screw more you'll strip the threads in the screw. So. What I'm guessing me now is that this is a new tenant that I ordered online. So it is loose. This is a new production. And this rifle is about approaching 150 years old, I think. So it's normal that the specs aren't totally the same. <clears throat> but it's I'm still pretty happy that it's a drop and fit almost. So let's get to the methods right now. So method number one would be using just a ball peen hammer that I have here. And you would want to just not add a little burr, but just curve in the dovetail edges just the slightest bit inside so that it tightens it. it. This doesn't cause damage to the firearm in any way or shape or form. You can't even see it. Second way would be to take a punch and do the exact same thing. You know, beat these things in. This also doesn't cause any harm, you're just displacing metal, you're not chipping anything off. That's why before I mentioned that this was not a center punch, because with a center punch you will cause some pretty severe holes. Then, third method, which I'll try first, will be taking a piece of this aluminum or tinfoil paper, and 
making just the slightest spacer underneath so that this tenon will come and butt up against the edges of the joint itself. So let's get started. Here's my little piece of tinfoil paper. I'll insert this from the left, so it's a dovetail. You insert whatever sights or tenons or whatever you have from right to left. And this is a trial and error process here. So yeah, I could already see this is this is tighter, but I'll need to double up this piece. So you can see here it's, it's yeah, it's pretty tight. But I want it almost to not move. So I'll just cut another piece. Here's piece number two. Now uh, I'll tell you guys from experience, this is where it gets tricky because now you have two pieces and they'll want to slide out. So that's why I left them with a little tail on. I'm not trying to do this with the camera, but uh, it really usually helps if you add Loctite. It's a, it's a pro tip so that it stops sliding around. There you go. See, again, I could add another layer of uh, tin foil underneath. It's tighter, but not the way I want it. So I'll take this out and cut another layer again. So piece number three is in. Uh, as soon as I slid in the tenant, it pretty much snapped right into place like it's supposed to be. But I'll try to push my luck here and add another fourth one because I could still move this a little bit but it really really tightened it so I'll try to add another piece so piece number four is in really can't complain now it's very tight has a nice tight fit I'll clean the edges up and I'll come right back just a little extra safety precaution here I'll lightly tap the edges with the punch just to make them bend in a little bit as mentioned before I mean, this is just obviously every rifle is going to be different you don't want this to be you know just start pounding on it right away all right so that's about good I'll build the rifle back up and I'll come right back to you guys. Alright, so final checkup here. You can see, built everything back together, perfectly how it's supposed to be. And there's absolutely no play now in here. Up and down, left to right, no play. The screws went in fine, everything was good. Always do a fun function check once you dismantle something. I had it happen to me that. I only took off the, fo the forearm, like I just did right now. Everything was, was fine. I put it back together. Gun was working, was cycling. The action was nice. I put two or three rounds in it, tried to cycle them, and they wouldn't feed. The issue was that the uh, the cartridge feeder plug, there, the little thing that's on top of the spring that pushes the cartridges into the action, was slightly crooked. So it would push in the cartridges crooked, and then the cartridges would go in the rifle crooked, and they would get stuck sideways at an angle. And the bottom actions it would cause cause double feeds slight issue but it really gets you thinking about like what you did wrong and it was just a little feeder a guy lubed everything up everything was nice always lube everything back up so yeah a uh, really quick video here takes only a few minutes to do this you know assembly everything included hopefully i didn't drag this on for too long but it's a really simple way to do this at home that's what guns gunsmiths do the only really new way of doing a dovetail is if like you weld it back up and have a milling machine or have a special T file and just refile it again I mean this is I've, I've watched multiple videos and I've looked a lot on forums and that's what people say to do just extremely light taps and you just try the, the dovetail fit every single time because if it's too tight in there you might have to file a little bit out and then if you don't have very small files, some type of jeweler's files to fit in the the joint itself. You might have to go buy some and then it could get expensive. But I mean, just the way I showed is extremely simple just with the aluminum foil, it's, it only takes a couple minutes. It's really, I mean, 
that stuff is only a few dollars at the grocery store. You could even go to the dollar store if you want. So, yeah, that was uh, just my little two cents here. So, thanks for watching.